Well, I bought this um, Heath, Kit, Heath Kit oscilloscope calibrator off of eBay a while back. Um, this is the second one of these that I have. The first one I've had for two or three years, and it works pretty well, but um, visually it was not in very nice shape. So this one here was advertised as um, basically brand new looking condition, but not working. And brand new to the point where even the, the top cover that goes on here was still in the original plastic. So that kind of tells me and the eBay seller felt the same that this never worked right from the beginning. So I decided to take a flyer on it and purchase it. It wasn't too awfully expensive and did a little bit of troubleshooting on it. And it wasn't totally dead. You could turn the flip the um, power on and the power knob would come on but other than that there was no output anywhere so did a little bit of digging around here I came to find out these two particular leads out of the transformer here are the um, 110 volt output this transformer has multiple output taps and one of them gives you 110 volts because you have a actually have a 100 volt output on this that you can feed your to your oscilloscope so and those particular lines were completely dead on this transformer and that seemed kind of odd to me it kind of got me looking around and you see down there that there's a row of diodes right there that are in a uh, basically a full rate full wave bridge rectifier configuration that I did a little bit of investigating, making sure they were all facing the correct direction. <clears throat> and they were, and I tested each one of them. I didn't actually pull them out of the circuit board because, well, for one thing, usually Heathkit circuit boards are pretty notorious for not being very high quality. And I was afraid if I desoldered them that I would end up ruining the trace and then I'd be jumping things around and I didn't, didn't want to do that. So I tested them in in circuit and they tested correctly with my diode function on my meter. But then I was a little bit worried that maybe they were breaking down at higher voltage at 100 and some volts and maybe basically dead shorting at that point, which you would think if it would do that in a short period of time it would smoke those diodes, but you just never know what, what happens. So. I decided this would be a perfect opportunity to utilize my dim bulb tester to do a little bit of troubleshooting. <clears throat> so I plugged the regular cord in, I desoldered these leads, soldered two wires into plate into that into place with that, connected them to a cord. Now this cord plugs into the dim bulb tester. I have that off now. I put a 25 watt bulb in there, which is the smallest bulb that I have. Turn the voltage all the way down. Plug this thing in. Okay, turn my meter on. Flip the power on here. So now it's the other tap down there powers that I believe powers the TTLICs that are in here. I don't have a schematic for this. I do have a, a build manual that I found off of the internet, but I don't have a schematic for this, so I don't know exactly where everything's going. I just haven't really traced it around, but I have a feeling that more than likely that other tap down there is probably a tap that provides a five volts to each one of these TTLICs, but I don't know that for absolute certain. So now, I've got this plugged into my isolation transformer just as a little extra bit of safety. Now I can flip this on and turn the switch on. Now we're live. Of course we don't have a voltage yet. I can run this up and I can watch the current meter which actually the way these AC current meters are you're not going to see any probably ain't much response to that until you're like a half amp or one amp anyway So that's kind of useless, but at least a 25 volt dim bulb if these 
rectifiers are breaking down and dead shorting, this bulb should limit the current and possibly start to light. So we'll see what happens here. So I'm up to 50 volts now and I'm on the 1 millivolt scale and I'm showing about 0.5 millivolts on the meter at the 200 millivolt scale so so far so good. Might as well just crank it right up. Again nothing on the current meter. The dim bulb is not lighting. We're up to full voltage now and we've got 0.9 millivolts on the output which is pretty much normal so because I've found that the DC voltages on these on the other calibrator that I have isn't really very accurate at all I guess yeah you know, these were mid 1970s vintage up until must have been maybe earlier mid 1980s this particular one if you look at the uh, date codes on the ICs and some of the other components they're around 81 1981 1982 vintage so this must be one of the later ones but crank that up to 10 millivolts we got 9.9 .9. cracking up to 100 we've got 99.5 now I gotta go up to the next scale okay one volt we've got 997 move up to the next scale on my meter 10 volt we've got 9.95 and then from there, I've got to go up to the 200 volt range on this. Make sure I'm. Whoop. There we go. Now, 100 volt. Got 99.3. So, at least as far as the DC output goes on this, now that I have regular 110 volts running through here and into that circuit, everything seems to be working normally. So, that tells me that. The trans for some reason maybe the transformer was no good right from the beginning because if you look at this unit it has never been used so literally from the time this was built it never worked and <clears throat> that was probably the reason why and who knows way back when 30 years ago somebody built this thing and supposedly it was sent back to Heathkit and Heathkit either didn't know what was wrong with it or they did know that that transformer was no good right from the start and basically condemned it as not worth repairing. I don't know what happens there where they give the guy a gave a guy a rebate back then or a new new kit or what. It, the eBay seller thought that this might have been built by Heath Kit, but if you look at the uh, some of the solder work on this it more than likely wouldn't have been. If it did then it wasn't very good quality. And also on the serial number there's something about the serial number, I can't remember what, that there was like a prefix, like a letter prefix or something on that, and this doesn't have that, so it was probably not factory made, but this thing is brand new, essentially brand new, so one thing I will do with this is, let me flip this back down, turn everything off. <clears throat> what I do will do with this thing I guess is number one I noticed that the filter caps are looking a little bit dicey and being 30 years with basically no use or maybe never any use I'm gonna replace all them and then I'm gonna pull the transformer out of my good unit and put it in here now that I know that there isn't actually a problem here that fried that transformer because everything is working normally and I should have myself a Heath kit, a soul scope calibrator that it basically looks like brand new. And then my other unit that has been well used and not very nice visually, I'll just use that, I guess, for spare parts or maybe keep an eye out for a transformer that would work with this. I'm going to have to, once I pull this out of here, I'll see what each one of the output voltages are on them. And then I can kind of keep an eye out on various different sites. I can find an equivalent one there's not a whole lot of room in here so it's not like I can maybe put like two or three transformers in here so anyways I just thought I would show another use for this dim bulb tester I didn't know if these 
diodes were going to break down and the last thing I wanted to do was take this cord and plug that directly into full 110 volt receptacle with nothing more than a 15 amp breaker which doesn't trip for a second or so and even under a full full dead short and in the meantime this thing smokes about 20 components so I, as I, time goes on I'll find other uses for this dim bulb tester as well and I'll just kind of demonstrate how I do use it there's a lot more to it than just plugging in a tube supply and seeing if <coughs> seeing if you have a dead short somewhere but anyways I just thought I would show that to you and give you another idea on how to use a dim bulb tester well I pulled out one of my oscilloscopes and as you can see this unit works um, exactly as it should now so basically I just swap that transformer over and we'll uh, have myself a really nice visually and good functioning oscilloscope calibrator then so 